Chupon Piri were Dene-speaking people, and in the 1930s, when the treaty were being signed, we picked this area because of uh, the good hunting for agriculture. At one time, we were an isolated community, and the only way that you can get into our community was flying. The airport was built back in the 70s, you know, and uh, at first we didn't have any lights on the airport, but uh, in the 80s uh, they added lights in there so you can fly in at night also. That was six years ago. Today we have a secondary highway that came in from the south and eventually went into Fort McMurray. You can drive here by road now. Well, my name is uh, Walter Janvey, and I'm the chief for the Chupon Perry First Nation. We're in northeastern Alberta, just uh, south of Fort McMurray. Uh, we're close to the Saskatchewan border, and also uh, we're in between Lacobish and Fort McMurray. When the oil companies started coming around back in the 60s and early 50s, I guess, uh, you know, uh, we thought these people were just going to come drill a few wells and be gone, you know. Now it's in the 90s and, you know, there's heavy exploration that's happening. You know, we didn't really have any involvement with industry until a few years ago. We knew they were here to stay and that this is our traditional hunting grounds. You know, we've been here for the last thousands of years. We should be involved with activities that are happening. You know, there's a lot of changes that were happening with our lifestyle and, you know, uh, we had a high unemployment rate and we decided to get involved. Uh, we formed uh, companies and we've uh, also start talking to the companies uh, and it was a hard at first you know but we managed to succeed we let them know loud and clear that uh, that we want to participate in wildlife management also in forest management we do tree planting uh, we also do road building road construction uh, we have a company that does both. We're a general contractor and in the wintertime we do a lot of work for the well companies. Uh, mostly brush cutting, uh, burning, and right away for a pipeline, piece clearing. We have a sawmill that's up and operating on Highway 63 near Miran Lakes. It's a very large mill and we managed to secure a timber quota from Alberta Forestry. It was a salvage of a forest fire. And through that we managed to put up a mill to harvest, cut and market 600,000 cubic meters of timber. Uh, we're very proud of that mill, which is in point 24 of our members.
We still live a uh, traditional livelihood, you know, like we hunt, we fish, we snare rabbits, uh, and a lot of uh, the older leaders are still active in making hide the tr traditional way. Uh, they bead, and the older people, or most of the young people, are learning from the elders how to maintain this tradition. Most of the men teach their young, young boys to hunt or they take them along on hunting trips and the bush is our livelihood. You know, the women, you know, they still gather, uh, pick berries. We set up camps in the summertime uh, during blueberry season to pick berries. Uh, there's usually a lot of excitement around camps when these things happen. Uh, family groups get together and go out. Uh, but there's some activities uh, that we're slowly losing out on. Hopefully, you know, we don't lose out on too much of our traditional livelihood. We have committees, uh, education committee, health committees, and recreation. You know, uh, a lot of times we involve our elders in the decision making or seek advice from them. When we run into problems, you know, like uh, we sit down with them one on one, or go out in the bush uh, and talk about it, and you know, uh, they're willing to share their knowledge and help the community grow. You know, and it, uh, they have a lot of uh, wise advice to give to us. Uh, we like to involve them in our decision making. <laughs> Oh, 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 We have a uh, lot of lakes and rivers surrounding our community and those lakes and river are very sacred to us. Uh, they bring us our livelihood. When you go hunting down a river, you know, it's not too often that uh, you come back empty handed. You know, uh, it's been very good to us. We fish in these rivers. We swim in these rivers. Uh, most of our paths or roads follow the river. We want to see these river systems and water protected from industry. So we ask these people to leave our lakes and rivers alone. The message that we'd like to send to industry, uh, gas, oil and forestry is that uh, we want to be actively involved with what's happening. You know, we want to know at all times uh, what they're up to so we can, you know, be prepared for the benefits that they have. So we can prepare our children for these positions. You know, uh, they, they can make a livelihood out of it. Uh, we also want to let them know that the environment, wildlife, is very important to us. We do not want to see it destroyed. So it's important that we communicate and that we work together so in the future we do not have any conflicts. You know, uh, it's very important that we keep the communication flowing between industry and the communities. Get us involved and we can be a big benefit to the companies and hopefully the future brings wellness to our communities, our children. Our children are very important to us. You know, we do not want to see our children on welfare 
and we do not want our kids to be addicted, living in poverty. There is a lot of wealth that is in this community or this region and we'll share it.